pure functions is a really simple concept, but um, when I moved from Java to Clojure, uh, that, one, that was one of the main things that made me uh, write better software and better code in general. So um, the thing is, uh, when you in uh, object-oriented uh, land like Java, etc., uh, you don't uh, often think why your code is uh, hard to test or why you struggle to reproduce an issue uh, quickly. And one of the reasons is that uh, OOP approach uh, is basically uh, forces you in some way to uh, not write pure functions. Uh, you rely on your classes, you rely on the encapsulation when you have uh, data baked inside your class, and then you have uh, not functions, but methods. And uh, in methods, it's uh, completely fine to refer to uh, local state of your class instance, right? So, for example, if we take a look into this example, a really simple one, we have a class counter, we have an um, integer value, and then we have two uh, methods, uh, like the interface to our state, to get and increment, right? And uh, when, you get, uh, when you call get function, uh, it has no params, uh, but the value that will be returned uh, will be different, right? Because it will uh, depend on the amount of time uh, someone else called the increment function. And this is really simple, uh, like, overly simple uh, example. Uh, but e when this code grows, uh, you still have this basic idea that you have state inside your class, and then you have methods. And uh, even if this method will uh, get some params like string a string a1 or something, and this logic will be much more complex, uh, then it in most places in a lot of code uh, this function won't be pure. And um, let's talk about what pure function is, like the definition of, of it. So it is. Uh, uh, there is two requirements, right? If your function has input params like arguments uh, or zero arguments uh, in the basic case, if you uh, call your function with the same params, uh, it will sh it should return the same result. So uh, it is a deterministic uh, feature. Uh, in this case, uh, get uh, if we want get to be pure. Uh, and it has zero params, it should re always return the same value. Uh, and also in more complex uh, case, when we have some other function with params a1, a1 uh, a2, if you, if you call, um, let's call it pure fn, if you call a pure function, pure fn with params a, um, a and b, it should always return some value. Uh, and it, this value should never change uh, for this combination of params. So that's the first property of pure function. The second one is that uh, there is no uh, side effects. And side effect is a mutation of some external state. Uh, for example, you uh, do an update in the database, uh, or you even write a file you call some external API, uh, etc. So this is two properties. And why uh, that is important to write, uh, to use pure functions a lot uh, to simplify your software. And um, let me switch to closure namespace. And there's multiple factors, right? But uh, the first one, uh, the main, uh, the most important for me is that uh, it, it gives you like a general simplicity. Because if you uh, know that your function is pure uh, and you look into these params like x and y, uh, that's, that's everything you need to know about your function really. Because it's not relying on any implicit state that you have somewhere in your program uh, and it doesn't read it 
inside the function body. Uh, and you just look at your arguments and you understand what exactly you need uh, for this function to work. Um, and that was, for me, when I moved from Java to Clojure, uh, that was like this aha moment when you understand that uh, you don't need to understand the entire system you have. If you want to test this particular block of code, and if it is a pure function, you just need to understand what prompts you need to uh, put in the function. And if you uh, suspect that there is a problem inside the function, potential like bug that you're trying to fix, etc., you don't need to re um, re initiate the entire system. You just want to understand what params you are getting inside this particular function in runtime. And after that, uh, you can forget about uh, running your application. You can just focus on this particular uh, block of code, this particular function. And with this input params, you just try to understand what's going wrong. Um, and having that, uh, the um, the thing that comes from, from this uh, property is that you can easily test your code. So uh, pure functions are ideal candidates for unit tests uh, because you don't need to set up anything from your runtime system. You don't need to spin up any components like HTTP service, etc. Uh, you just need your function and you can define input prompts and uh, write assertions on the output. So the testing of uh, pure functions is trivial. Uh, also, refactoring. Uh, when you know your function is pure, you can just go inside, change something. If you have unit tests on top of that, if that passes, uh, most likely nothing else will change. Um, and the other pattern is that um, if your pure function represents some uh, rather heavy or complex logic uh, in terms of calculations, etc., uh, you can easily uh, trade memory uh, for their performance. Uh, so you can add um, caching or memoization on top uh, because a pure function, uh, you basically, if you know that uh, you call add uh, one and two, that should always return three, right? Uh, and you can uh, create a cache, cache with values uh, mapping one and two as input prompts into three. So in this case, obviously it doesn't make sense, but if this function is heavy in terms of calculations, you can save quite a lot of uh, resourcing, resources by caching the result. And uh, you understand, uh, uh, like your program doesn't change if you just skip the calculation and just show the cached, cached value. Uh, so one of the examples of uh, non-pure function in Clojure, um, because Clojure doesn't dictate you, uh, you can write whatever you want. Uh, you can uh, just, without any problems, write uh, completely uh, in pure code, like uh, database calls inside your function all over the places. So the language itself that doesn't force you to write pure functions. It's up to developer to build these patterns. And uh, um, uh, like one of the uh, ideas how you get better at writing more reliable code is understand the boundaries where you write uh, some uh, side effectful functions and uh, splitting the layer of uh, pure functions logic. So in this case, we have a counter, which is an atom, and it, it just sits in the namespace. And then uh, we have this function that gets the value and it just derives the counter. And obviously now this is not a pure function. And also the increment is not a pure function because it mutates uh, this state. And in, in more general example, like uh, let's say uh, not uh, pure fn, right? And then we have, uh, let's say we, this is our HTTP handler or something. Then we do uh, get items from db. Um, let's call them like items 
items. And then we, for example, do like it's a bit of uh, pseudocode here. Uh, I don't want to write like exact closure code, but you'll get the idea. Then we'll let's say have uh, some transformation of that items map uh, convert item then filter filter do something or like is something yeah then we're getting the the result like let's say we have um, filtered items and at the end let's say we do something like uh, do seek and uh, filtered item filtered items list um, update like update item api api call uh, fi so in our case this is not a pure function for two reasons um, one is that we initially getting items from uh, external source from our database uh, and at the end we do a loop and we updating uh, some uh, again we mutating we causing some side effect by calling external API um, and now it's really hard to 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 test it right but if we have a logic here that we interested in uh, like this convert on and filtering idea uh, in that case uh, what we should do is split it into three layers uh, the first layer will be getting all the data that we need uh, then this middle section will be converted to a pure function and then at the end we have these uh, side effects and um, in that case uh, we can just create our pure function for the filtered items um, filtered items fn let's call it like that and now it's pure it will get items list as input param uh, then we can just get this and put it here and um, now we can just use this in our unit tests so this could be could be unit tested and um, this still not pure function, right? But at least we removed a huge section and moved it into pure function that could be easily tested. So we now getting this and put it right here, items. And now it's much easier, right? And also, uh, I said that there is no uh, uh, guarantee from the language uh, to uh, have a build this, like define these boundaries. Uh, which uh, defines what function is pure. There's no guarantees like that. Uh, but usually, uh, at least if your function is doing some uh, uh, external uh, mutations or API calls, uh, this question mark, um, exclamation mark at the end of the function name usually tells that this function is not pure and it's side effectful. Uh, but again, it's just a naming convention uh, not everyone is following that, uh, but I just uh, really like to, to, to use it. At least it gives you some idea that this function is doing something uh, not pure. So, yeah, that's, um, I think, the idea of pure functions. And if you, in OP, uh, you can still, uh, uh, in some way, uh, try to use this pattern. So, for example, uh, if you keep your data in uh, in some classes in Java, because that's the only way how you can uh, define your data in Java. Uh, but then, if you have this layer of uh, uh, static methods, for example, uh, that can 
that that don't rely on any state. Uh, you can basically pretend that uh, this static method is pure function because it gets input as prompts and then it uh, returns some result. Uh, and actually, uh, when I was um, learning Clojure, I was still a Java developer. I used that style of programming for a while in Java, and even that simplifies code code a lot. So th the main uh, point, if uh, w what you can take from this video, is um, if you don't rely on implicit state uh, in your code, uh, that will make it much better. Uh, if you can look into uh, arguments of your function that you're calling, and you can, uh, and, and if you're sure that's the only input params your function have, it doesn't uh, read anything from from the body of the function. Uh, even that simplifies your life a lot. So yeah, hope that was useful. Um, uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, uh, leave them in the comment section and see you next video. Bye bye.